Hi folks, Didi Solar here. This is a quick vlog in my solar workshop about some solar electric cooking projects that I'm working on. That's one of them right there. That's the small one. And I will zoom in on it in a minute. Just to give you some background on this project, a long time ago I ran across a research paper from a polytechnic university where some people were using diode strings and solar panels to heat up water and cook food. They didn't actually try it, but they suggested a super efficient container like this with the diodes could make a very, very efficient solar electric cooker. I don't see where they actually tried it, they just suggested it. And what I'm basically doing is I'm carrying on their work. Because I got very, very interested when I read that in the paper, I thought that would be incredible. But a lot of the time went by and I wasn't able to actually work on this. It was only until the end of 2023 and the beginning of 2024 that I actually started working on this technology. And I found that it does hold promise. I think it's pretty good. As far as I know, this is the first time anyone's ever put diodes in one of these to try to cook food. Whether it will work or not, I don't know. It's one of those things. It caught my attention. I kept thinking about it for a really long time. It's time to give it a try and see if it'll work. You can see I'm up to 124.8 degrees now on the immersion side. So the diodes are warming up pretty good. And yet I'm only getting 6.2 watts. You know, I think 124 degrees and rising is pretty good for 6.2 watts. And there, just went up again, 125. Again, just to show you, 6.4 watts. That's not very much power, that's not very much heat. But it's still rising in temperature. That is a super insulated container. There's a string of diodes inside that are immersed. And then there's a stainless steel area inside that's used for putting the food in. This is probably the first official test of the device. I've been working on these for a long time now. All right, let me explain what's going on here. The multimeter is just showing the solar panel voltage and the solar panels are floating around 15 volts. Now with a resistance heating element, you'd probably be down to six volts or something like that. But the diode string is keeping the voltage up higher around 15 volts. And so I'm getting more power and more heat. On the right, you can see a K-type thermocouple and that's just measuring the temperature of the immersion inside the wall of this cooking container. And then inside is a stainless steel container that's got water in it so I can do the cooking. Now right now I'm just warming it up and I just turned it on. Keep in mind that this is using very little power. I'm putting 12 to 20 watts into this thing and I will show you that here. Let me pick the camera up. You can see right there that I'm getting about 14 watts into the device which isn't very much and it's a bit cloudy today so it keeps going back and forth. It's generally about 20 watts and then it'll go down to 14 watts or something like that. Anyway, not very much heat. 14, 15 watts is nothing. That's that's no power at all. That's nothing. But these diodes are able to extract more heat from the solar panel by keeping the voltage up higher. And 14 watts may not seem like a lot of heat, but you know, in the right container it can do more than you think. Anyway, right now it's under preheat. I've just turned it on. And again, I have two of them. This is a small one. You can see by the size of my hand, this isn't very big. It's not intended to run on a large amount of power. Hopefully, if everything goes well, this will be very efficient. I don't really know how efficient it's going to be. And you can see I've reached 100 degrees. But that's on the immersion. It doesn't mean the food has reached 100 degrees yet. I'm actually measuring the immersion on the outside where the diodes are. Now, if you look here, you can see all the connections into the container. I don't want to move it, but... You can see there's two copper wires going inside and those are feeding the diodes. I've also got my meter on there and the temperature readout. And this thing is just sitting here and it's doing an official test. I've done many tests, but this one I'm going to uh, say is the first time I've actually had the stainless insert in there. I bought a stainless insert. I had a very hard time finding proper ones that fit, but I finally found one. Now I can put this lid on. Before I couldn't put that lid on. I will insert some clips of the work that I did on the heating element that's in this device here. I've got more than one of them. And these are pretty tedious to make, but they're necessary in order to use the diodes properly. If you're interested in learning more about heating with diodes, cooking with diodes off of solar panels, just check the links in the description. I've got quite a bit of work already documented on that. And you can see the solar panels moving around a little bit. Of course, as time goes on, that's going to change. 15.6 volts is pretty decent for the solar panel it's hooked up to. Those solar panels do run at a lower voltage. And there's no electronics or any regulating circuit that's maintaining that voltage. It's just diodes. So there's no need to worry about impedance or anything like that. The diodes will change a little bit. Over time, there's nothing to do about that. 
But if you compare the amount of voltage swing in here compared to, say, a resistance heating element, there's no comparison. The resistance heating element properly matched, it'd probably be down to 6 volts now. You wouldn't be getting hardly any heat at all. The diodes are staying up around 15 volts. They don't pull the solar panel down to nothing when there's bad conditions. Right now I'm only getting 16 watts. It's cloudy. There's not good weather. And yet I'm still getting about 15 volts. So that means the solar panel can have a good chance of putting out maximum power and maximum heat. Now that's not the only project I'm working on. I'm going to show you another project. Let me pick the camera up. Here's another project I'm working on. Now you're probably saying, oh look, it's a cooler. Well, it actually is a cooler. That's the truth. But this is not just any cooler. This is actually a portable hot water heater that runs off of a relatively small solar panel. And it also uses solid state diode strings to do the heating. Let me pick the camera up again and I'll show you what's inside. And in there is a prototype for an immersion element that I'm developing. I don't know whether it'll work or not. But everything is set up and ready for the test, except for I need to put something in there with the diodes and I need to fill it with water. There's two copper wires coming out and they come out the side. I've got a watt meter and some connectors I can use to connect a solar panel or different types of solar panels. And yes, right now that's just hanging in there with some string. Of course, this is a six gallon plus container, but I'm not going to fill it all the way up right now. I don't need to. There's no water in here yet. And that test will be taking place soon. And of course, I will try to record it. And this container is going to be possibly having a thermometer and a voltmeter, I'm not really sure. And this is going to be a fairly portable way to take hot showers. And the key here, the take home here, is I shouldn't need a super large solar panel to do this. I'm not really sure what the biggest panel would be. I'm going to try a 100 watt panel. When have you ever seen a 100 watt panel heat water? I don't know. Maybe it'll work. We'll see. And as soon as I get that test done, I will record it and I'll make sure and make a video of it and share the results. And here's something else on my workbench. This is a multimeter that I'm reviewing. It's actually really nice. That review will be coming out soon. And I don't know whether this multimeter has been released or not. I couldn't find it. But it's a very nice meter. I did not I did think it was uh, very high quality and worked quite well. There's going to be an extensive review of this coming out soon, but it's going to be in the format of learning how to use a digital multimeter for solar power. Basically, it's going to be a tutorial on how to use multimeters with solar power to troubleshoot batteries, inverters, and things like that. And it's a follow-up, actually, to my last video about digital multimeters. So now this is going to be the second video in the series. Here it is later in the test. You can see that I've reached 213.2 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's interesting. However, what's really interesting is that it's no longer running off the same solar panel. It's now running off a very poorly matched 50-watt solar panel. Unfortunately, it's not well matched to this particular panel, so it's dragged the voltage down to 14 volts. But it's not stopping it from hitting 214 and climbing. Again, that's the immersion side that's hitting 214. This might actually work. We'll see. It is now time to open the solar cooking container and see what happens. Let's go ahead and do that. Hopefully I don't burn myself again. Yep, the water has reached a boil. It's working. Okay, it's time to do a check of the interior cooking chamber on this cooker here. The sun is not doing good at all. It keeps going in and out over and over again. It's hard to get consistent power. However, I've reached 229.1 Fahrenheit on the outside part of the cooker. The voltage is being dragged way down. Again, this is a separate solar panel. It's not properly matched, and that's why the voltage fell to the 14s. Anyhow, let's go ahead and take the lid off and do an evaluation to see if this is going to be worth pursuing further. Again, this is kind of the first official test. Hopefully I don't burn myself. It's probably what's going to happen. And there's your answer. It is boiling. Yeah, it's boiling. That's pretty amazing. Down to like 9 watts now. Really wish the solar panel was better matched. It's a smaller solar panel. And of course the boiling has stopped because I let all the heat out. Not all of it. I can just put the lid on and it'll start boiling again. It's working quite well actually. On the left you can see some batteries. These are actually batteries I was sent for review. These are 20 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. And I did a pretty good review on them. Actually what I used them for was cooking. And I was a little surprised these batteries really put out. And these are made by DR Prepare. 
So they sent me the batteries for review and I really ran them hard to see what they could do and they I would say they passed the test by my standards. That review should be on the channel pretty soon I hope. It might already be posted by the time you see this but I don't know. So I've got my charge controller on top. I was pretty impressed with these batteries. I did quite a lot of cooking with it. And there's two of them so that's two 20 amp hours in parallel. In case you don't already know I run my workshop on solar pretty much and the lighting is all solar. A lot of the instruments I run are solar so I don't have a lot of batteries and these two 20 amp hour batteries are surely going to make a welcome addition to the workshop. Right now I have that battery there. That's a GBS battery, lithium iron phosphate, and that charge controller. And I also have that solar generator right over there. That's one I took apart and worked on. I put my own screen on, my own voltmeter. And that's pretty much what lights the workshop. I also have one other small solar generator I use for lighting at the other workbench. But not very much out here in the workshop. I have more batteries but not in the workshop. These guys here I think are going to do very well in helping light the workshop, probably running an inverter, powering appliances, or whatever else I need to run. To summarize upcoming videos, I've got the battery review, I've got a multimeter review coming out, but those are actually going to be much more interesting than just reviews. They're not just looking at the product and talking about it. They're actually showing real world use and demonstration, real world tests, and I think those are going to be pretty interesting videos. I've got at least one more diode-based solar cooking video coming out. Actually, I don't have any cooking videos, so one more diode-related video, and this is going to be about solar electric cooking. This thing here, and I've got one other I haven't shown yet. Those should be coming out as soon as I can get them out. I don't know. This one here has to pass all my tests before I will make any formal video about it. Cooking with diodes is something that I've never seen hardly any research material on at all. Almost nobody knows about it. Almost nobody heard about it. Most people don't understand it. They don't get it. But it holds a lot of promise or I would not be spending all this time and money on it. Anyway, I will show this in action once I'm satisfied with the results as well as the other bigger one. If you have any questions about the solar cooker project, I hope I made it plain. This is a solar electric cooker. Run straight off a solar panel. It's going to hold food. It's super efficient. I've got two of them. If you're interested in learning more about these types of projects, uh, heating and cooking with diodes, I have a few videos out right now. And like I said, there's not a lot of information about it. And I did extensive work documenting it and trying to explain it so everybody can understand it, why you would use diodes instead of a resistance heating element. And just to give you an example of the larger version of this cooker, here is the internal part where the food would be placed inside. And you can see it's as big as this entire thing. So you can tell this is a very small solar cooker, whereas the big one, when I'm finished building that, it's going to have quite a bit more room inside. And it will take quite a bit more power to operate, but that's okay. It still isn't too bad. And that will appear on video at a later time. You can see how much bigger this is. Though. This is more reasonable. This is a second one I built. This is actually a part of that second solar cooker that you're seeing. The big one, I've done some tests with that, but I'm waiting for some uh, supplies to finish building it. I can't really use it right now. I've done a little work with it, and it does seem promising. This one here had some problems with uh, leakage, but it's still promising enough that I'm still working on it, and I'm still spending time with it. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you find them interesting, please let me know. If you have any questions about the solar electric cooking or anything else, feel free to let me know. Please check the videos in the description, though, because they explain a lot of the stuff, a lot of the work that I've been doing with these diodes and why one would want to use diodes instead of something else. Okay, folks, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.